Good morning to everybody. Thank you for your presence in this online meeting regarding three years project funded by Italia Agency for Development Cooperation and implemented in WOW from 2018 to 2021 in partnership with AMREF and the HARD, a local NGO. The project title is Support for Food Security of Healthy Nutrition in the Western Bahar El Ghazal region. So we welcome Dr. Simone Cerqui, Cerqui from Italia Cooperation, Lucia Pettinari from Vides Volontariato Donne Sviluppo, Maria Sassi, University of Pavia, Members Planning and Development Office in Addis Abeba, and all the auditor, Rosaria and uh, I think the other people. The three community of South Sudan, Gumbo, Juba, Wao and Tonje, who are working in agriculture field in order to improve food security, empower the South Sudanese women, involving the students of our school. So now we can uh, we ask the communities only to present their team. We start from Tonje. Sister Elizabeth, you can tell who are the people with you. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Okay, the community sisters are present here. Uh, Sister Lavita, who is uh, involved in the ICSAP program, together with men, agricultural group. Uh, Sister Maivan is absent now for the time being. And uh, Sister, yeah, one of our volunteers is here helping us in this line. And the uh, other sisters who are here, they are too are absent at, for the time. Now, Sister uh, Teachers, Teacher Paul from the secondary side, and Teacher um, Madaraka from the pri primary side, were in connection with the uh, group are here. And uh, our teacher, um, Deng, who is uh, uh, responsible of the agricultural sector, and he also is here from the secondary side. And also for this uh, chiefs, he was following them. And he too is here. And there are students uh, who are involved in this agricultural program, which had been helped them due to this ag uh, agricultural program. They are four, 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 four students are here. And to also who are benefited from this, and there is a sultan here. And uh, In terms of the eight sons, even the primary, the mother and their families. Good morning, it's a point from the secondary in Tonch. For the ground, as you should be the students for family and their yeah, cultivation. Yeah. And Sister Lavita uh, came uh, just this year in February uh, 2020, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 2021. And uh, I just follow up what Sister Miriam has been doing in the past years with regard to agriculture. Uh, all under the banner of except 
uh, into communication sustainable agriculture farming i am very new to this place and new to the cultural background and the farming uh, but uh, together with mr dain who is an agronomist uh, i do get technical support and that also from the sisters who know this work who has experience of the past thank you very much how oh, sir Good morning. I am Mr. Deng. I am also the culture coordinator uh, in San Francisco. I, uh, I am supporting. Uh, I am in charge of two group potential farmers uh, that are headed by the sheep, local sheep, and also uh, the school garden, supported by ESA. Thank you. They are telling me or calling me that you don't need to be long. Okay. And sure. Okay. Yes. And Julia from secondary side also got some help from the South Switch or Julian side. Morning. Yeah, this is a big fetch. I got some help from this. Sister Elizabeth, stuff. can you put off the video because you, we can hear you uh, clearly. If you if you put off the video, maybe we can hear you clearly. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's me, Elizabeth. It's me, Elizabeth. Fetch. I got some help from the side of the high school side from the stars. Thank you. I am Marco Matisco, student in the high school. Thank you so much for your support. These are the cultural things. Thank you. Morning. We give us more now from high school. We got some support, and we are able now to stand. Thank you. Mothers, mother. Okay, thank you very much. Now we continue. Good morning, all. Some some more people to be introduced. My name is my name is Rose Sarokjol. Thank you. for this program because it's helping us thank you sister dolores okay good morning everyone we are your present in wow and uh, we are struggling with our internet connection we are just trying to follow the meeting we are around uh, seven eight of us present some have yet to arrive thank you very much for this program and uh, we hope that we can participate in this fully thank you very much have a nice day. okay kumbo sister lourdes good morning good morning I am uh, Sister Lourdes. I am here in Gumbo. And we are waiting for the women and some of the people who have participated in the project of agriculture. But thank you. Okay, Lucia. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, now uh, I'm going to present shortly the project. Uh, it will be a short presentation. And so, good morning, everybody. It's uh, also for me a pleasure to be here this morning. 
And I am Lucia, and with uh, Rosaria Cortellessa, I managed the project from uh, the Vides uh, headquarters in Italy. Uh, I would like also uh, to, um, to do a special thanks also to Sister Francesca and Sister Ruth, uh, uh, who are not uh, here with us this morning, but they have supported us in uh, running uh, the project. Uh, this project is a, a three-year project in uh, the area of food and nutrition security, promoted by uh, the VIDES, and it started on June uh, 2018, and it will end uh, in September of this year. And uh, next, please. Um, this project is co-financed by the Italian uh, Agency for Development Cooperation in partnership with AMREF, University of Pavia, Salesian Sisters of Don Bosco Community in Wau, HARD, and with the support of Municipality of Wau uh, and the Health and Agriculture uh, Ministry. Vides is interested in general coordination and administrative management from Italy. Instead, the Salesian sisters focus their interest in administrative management and the logistic support on site, and um, also in operational coordination of activities, information, and information. University of Pavia, on the other side, is uh, uh, overall dedicated in uh, data collection and uh, research with the uh, creation of a system for it. Uh, it also make a nutrition database and uh, at the end, uh, it put uh, in writing the final report on the evaluation of the results. Uh, HAMREF takes care of the health and nutrition aspects and manages uh, the health coordination and prepares the organization of professional training. Finally, HARD um, focuses on agricultural production and the empowerment of the most vulnerable local communities, overall uh, through uh, income generating activities, technical coordination, meeting content, monitoring, and the creation of working groups. The, uh, the uh, project goal, uh, the, the purpose of this project is uh, to reinforce the resilience of the most vulnerable population in uh, the food security area, therefore contributing to food security and fighting malnutrition in the entire region of Western Bar El Ghazal, in line with the goals of the Agenda 2030, in particular with the goal of two. Next. The project operates in the area of the Western Bar Al Ghazal State. In particular, it involved the city uh, Wow and the small realities around the city, including the communities that host them. It developed mainly in the city of Wow, starting from the current disastrous situation such as the 90% of the South uh, of the people find themselves a global situation with a lack of health and humanitarian assistance due to the war. And um, for, um, 48% of the South Sudanese population faces crisis and emergency acute food insecurity. The population that's suffering the most is elderly, children under five and single-headed households, the majority of which are headed by women. Next. This uh, project is uh, direct uh, uh, to the poorest population of WOW protection of civilian camp and the settlements around the city of WOW including uh, the communities of Bagari, Besselia, and Bazia Payams. The action is particularly focused in supporting a displaced population, returnees, and female population. Uh, we can um, uh, say that the project actions are uh, four. The first 
evaluation on the food on the food and nutrition status. So then the, uh, it consists in uh, identification of the affected uh, by the most vulnerable groups. The second is monitoring system of food and nutrition security, designing and in implementation of data collection systems and data analysis. The third is support actions. So there is an humanitarian action, so stable mobile mixed health system and food rations and medicines provision and uh, a development action um, through income generating activities such as uh, fish ponds, seeds provision, food chain. The fourth action is the sensitization, mobilization, training and institutional capacity building. Uh, next. So as I said, this is a three year project. Uh, in the first year, of the project was created the data collection device and was also prepared the action plan for the nutrition, health and training. Through the project, uh, 50 community health workers were created in basic health care, postnatal health, nutrition assessment and uh, infant young child feeding. The health workers provided first diagnosis courses, education in dissemination, and good practices for the community to approximately 3,000 people in the extended municipality of Wau. Basic medicines and nutritional supplements were purchased and distributed to cope with the stock out periods of the dispensary uh, warehouses involved in the project. Mm -hmm. Community mobilization and awareness activities had as main participants the community leaders, local authorities, and community members with the formation of a fish pond to promote alternative source of protein. Uh, furthermore, a fish tank was built to stem the problem of hunger. In addition, meetings uh, on health and nutrition were formed uh, at the State Health Ministry, and they have been created vegetables gardens for the cultivation of ve vegetables, uh, essential, of course, for a balanced nutrition. Next. And uh, in uh, the course of the second year, Next again, sorry. Uh, in the course of the second year, health workers, community, health volunteers, and the community leaders who provide the health and food safety services were trained through training courses. This project has directly supported 24 health facilities through the supply of essential medicines with particular regard to two stabilization centers for children hospitalized in a state of acute malnutrition. Next. Some food security activities have been promoted in Greater Bagari region and um, because this re region was not reached in the first year. And in general, food safety condition for uh, the target groups have improved also due to the distribution of uh, fast germinating seeds, uh, in particular peanuts. Following the spread of the COVID pandemic, masks, gloves, and soaps were purchased and distributed in the villages. Uh, where was also carried out an information campaign on the main prevention measures. Next. Um, finally, during uh, the first semester of the third and the final year of the project, the research activity continued and the database on food safety and household well-being was updated. 
This initiative continued to support the 24 uh, health centers, including nine in the extended Bagari region and the remaining 15 in the extended Wau municipality. The various activities permitted to face with a significant number of common diseases, including acute malnutrition, uh, through hospitalization of children under five. Uh, two, in particular, two training, training courses were conducted with the following themes, such as exclusive breastfeeding, weaning from six months, balancing the baby's diet, concepts of maternal and child health. So in uh, next, in conclusion, uh, we would like to say that uh, uh, it is a hope that uh, what uh, has been achieved will be an incentive for new projects and new collaboration, uh, that uh, these goals uh, can be enhanced, especially thanks to the training of local staff, and uh, that they can uh, become from, uh, from benef beneficiaries to promoters of development action. So thank you for your attention and uh, I wish you a lovely day. Thank you very much. We give us the general overview of uh, the project. Thank yes. you very much. Now, Lucia. I mean, sorry, Maria. Yes, thank you. Let me first share my screen. Mm. Uh, first of all, let me thank Vides for the organization of this initiative that allows me to present and discuss with you some of the evidence, uh, evidence uh, from our research activity. Uh, the research activity had a specific role in this project. Uh, this role was uh, to inform interventions uh, uh, based on evidence. And uh, this is very important because if we have uh, evidence behind intervention, we can make them coherent uh, with the context. And this was the major purpose of uh, our activity that lasted uh, all the three years uh, of uh, the project. I would also uh, like to thank Thank you, the participant to this meeting, because it's very important for us at this point to have your feedback, uh, especially for uh, a future uh, projection. So uh, let me start with my presentation. As I was mentioning, our focus was on household food security and livelihood in WOW. Uh, as uh, Lucia mentioned, uh, our uh, project area was in uh, the Baregaza region, the green area in this map, and we zoomed into the western Baregaza, and especially in the district of WOW. Uh, uh, Gazara uh, is uh, an interesting region. Uh, the name translated as a Sea of Gazelles uh, from Arabic, and uh, uh, this name uh, is uh, from the river. Uh, you can see in this map uh, that uh, pass through uh, the region. And uh, this is to say that uh, this is an area rich of natural resources and uh, especially water, unfortunately not fully exploited. However, if you focus on this part of the slide, I would like to show you the triangle in which we operated. It is uh, the triangle including uh, one now, Bicelia, Bagari, and Bazia. So we consider the, the reality of the city, wow, and the reality of rural areas, of remote rural areas, that of Bicelia, Bagari, and Bazia. 
And uh, when we uh, started our project, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, the area of uh, Biselia, Bagari, and Bazia were not accessible due to conflict. Uh, luckily, on uh, the 12th of September 2018 in Addis Ababa, the warning parties in South Sudan signed a new peace agreement, uh, and this peace agreement uh, uh, allowed us uh, to uh, enter into Bagari, Bazia, and Basilia and uh, um, include uh, uh, in our sample also the households uh, of that area. We interviewed uh, 1,381 households, uh, and they represent uh, they are a statistically representative sample. Why it is important to have a statistically representative sample? Because the conclusions of our analysis uh, can be extended to all the population, hmm? not only to the specific households we interviewed. And uh, as Lucia was mentioned, uh, we deserved uh, a specific attention to training. Uh, we started our activity selecting uh, local enumerators uh, and training them. In this beautiful picture, you can see our enumerators uh, after the training course uh, with the certificate in their hands. We also supported the enumerators uh, during the first uh, survey submission. Here we are at, uh, uh, we are starting from uh, one of the first mission, just to train them on how to interview uh, people. We also trained uh, data entry uh, and we explained them how to organize an Excel file for a data imputation. We explained them how to uh, clean the data set. And uh, I'm pleased to uh, inform you that uh, some of these uh, people are now using the competencies uh, developed in this project as a numerator or a data entry in other initiatives. And I think this is a very important result of the project because uh, human capital is a challenging issue in South Sudan, and, but I'm turning on this point very soon. Soon. We dedicated uh, um, a lot of time uh, explaining uh, our uh, project to the communities involved uh, and discussing with uh, representatives, uh, the chief and paramount chief, uh, uh, about the initiative and how we could uh, improve uh, our analysis. They provided us uh, valuable inputs uh, to our questionnaire. Here we are at the POC discussing with the representative of uh, the community, the WAU POC. Well, here we are in uh, Bagari with the Paramount Chief uh, our first project manager and the chief of the area. And in this area, the representative of the communities were very important because nobody uh, knew the number of the population living in Bagari, Bazi, and Basilia, and where they uh, were uh, living. So we did a census. And also the institution, the international and local institutions in WOW was very precious because they give us support in entering in these areas. Here we are at RRC and this person in explain us the best route to enter in Bagari, Bazi and Basilia, but also UN OCHA was a very important partner because they uh, allowed, uh, help us uh, in uh, uh, connecting with uh, Paramount Chief and Chiefs uh, of uh, the investigated areas. Uh, what I want to present today are uh, the major results achieved in uh, uh, five major areas. Uh, I'm referring to the demographic features, uh, the human capital, occupation and income, food and nutrition security, water sanitation and hygiene. Mm -hmm. I'm referring to the year 2020. 
And let me start with the demographic feature. Please, if I'm not clear, uh, stop me and uh, I'm available to uh, turn on the different points again. So uh, let me start with the age uh, pyramid. This, uh, age, uh, this uh, uh, figures uh, provides uh, a graphical illustration of the composition of various age and sex group in a population. For example, let's focus on Bagari. Mm -hmm. uh, 13% of the male population is in the age 04, and 40% of the female population is in the age 04. So from these uh, uh, figures, uh, we can immediately see that uh, uh, South Sudan is not only the youngest state uh, in the world, uh, but uh, uh, it is also a country with a youngest population, a very young population. Can you see? The majority of the population is concentrated in this aid. And this is a visible phenomenon eh? because uh, walking down streets, uh, you can see children everywhere, eh? as I represented in this uh, figure. Uh, if we compare uh, these uh, pyramids uh, with that of South Sudan in 2009, we can see some divergences. And the first divergence uh, is uh, the basis of the pyramid. Can you see it is smaller in comparison to that of uh, South Sudan? Why? We investigated this aspect uh, and uh, uh, we noted that uh, the uh, natality rate is reducing in uh, the area we are investigated. And this is due to the high under five uh, infant mortality rate the high maternal mortality rate, which uh, is uh, mainly uh, related to uh, the collapse of the public health system and inadequate qualified health professionals. But we also noted some psychological effect of conflict on, mother, uh, on mothers, and these were confirmed by uh, the studies conducted in South Sudan, in the sense that conflict is associated with a reduce in the natality rate. We also noted another phenomena that was not present in the country in 2009. This is the last census for the country. And uh, it is related to a share of elderly people that is increasing. This phenomena, eh, it is here. We can capture uh, this phenomenon from this part of uh, uh, the figure. Can you see? This is very tiny and this is larger. And this is a phenomenon that we need to keep under control because elderly people are vulnerable people and deserve a specific intervention. And probably in the future, they're becoming an important uh, uh, area uh, for uh, uh, intervention. Let me make another general consideration uh, based on this uh, uh, age uh, pyramid because the fact that we have a large basis means that the people that are working have to support a large number of children. And they have to pay for their fees, for school, for their health care, and so on. And this is the same for the economy. This means that uh, the people depending on uh, uh, the working population uh, should be uh, um, uh, monitored and clearly understood. Let me show uh, these numbers. From what we have uh, understood in our data set, each working person has to support at least three people. 
But this is an underestimated uh, number because uh, we also find found extended families uh, in the sense that one family with one working uh, person is also supporting at least one or even two other families. Mm -hmm. And this would not be a problem in a developed uh, economy, but it is a very big problem in a situation in which poverty is widespread. In this figure, we have the share of households uh, by a poverty level. The red bar of this histogram uh, represents the share of the very poor household in our sample, the light red, the share of poor, and the other are uh, non-poor households. And as you can see, especially in Bisselia, Bazi, and Bagari, uh, uh, poverty is uh, uh, a dramatic phenomenon. Also in Guau, but especially in Bisselia, Bazi, and Bagari, we have a widespread working poverty. What does it mean? It means that we have a situation where the majority of families, uh, or almost the totality of families, uh, with at least one person in paid work, uh, have a household income below the poverty line. Mm. And it is difficult to support uh, the, uh, uh, all the members of the family. We also find a high rate of unemployment that is making this situation uh, even more dramatic. And uh, uh, the unemployment rate uh, is also related to uh, lack of job opportunities. Job opportunities are compromised by a fragile and unstable economy and a widespread situation of insecurity that limits the availability of jobs on the formal market. But uh, uh, job opportunities are also limited by uh, the quality of the human capital. And this is, uh, sorry, the second chapter of my presentation. Let me show you the literacy rate, which is the share of literate people on the total people. In this figure, you have uh, uh, the distinction between male and female people in the uh, investigated area, Bagari, Bazia, Bisselia, and Wow. And the red part of the bar provides the share of people illiterate. And as you can see, the illiteracy rate is very high in all the investigated areas. And if you compare the situation of males with that of female, you can see the gender gap. This means that the share of illiterate women is higher than that of uh, male. This was an expected uh, result, especially in Bagari, Bazia, and Bisselia. Wow, because of uh, the insecurity and the conflict situation. Conflict produces a, a well-known phenomena. So people are forced to migrate in other areas of the country, looking for safe uh, places. And uh, uh, we noted that uh, half of the population in Bagari, Bazia, and Bisselia were internally displaced people, those who were forced to flee their home uh, because of insecurity. Uh, the situation in Guau is different because uh, not including uh, the, protection of civilian, the people in protection of civilian camp and IDPs, uh, these uh, people, uh, because there were uh, um, 
subject of a specific, uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, interview. But as you can see, uh, the situation is very different eh? in uh, protection of civilian camp and IDP camps. I shoot uh, these pictures in uh, the IDP camp around the cathedral in Wow. And as you can see, the situation is uh, pretty much deteriorated. Eh? These people are not included in this data I'm showing you. So uh, the uh, illiteracy rate uh, partly depend on conflict and insecurity due to this migration process, uh, but also due to the fact that uh, infrastructure has been, has been destroyed by war. I took this picture here, the entrance in Bagari. This was the business card of Bagari. And in this area, there are no schools. Uh, this means that children are exposed uh, to um, uh, uh, to uh, some situations uh, that uh, uh, are not for their age. For example, they are involved in conflict. Not taken this picture in in Bagari because it was not allowed to take picture, but uh, I saw uh, many children with uh, these guns and uh, with their name engraved on the guns handle. So the fact that there are no schools is a big problem in these areas because schools have not only an educational role, but also a powerful and primary tool for child social protection. And uh, I would like to show you the difference uh, of uh, children in areas without school and children with areas uh, uh, where uh, uh, schools are present. Uh, Sister Lourdes, this is your school. And uh, uh, turning to the uh, education uh, and focusing on uh, the literate people, uh, we also noted that uh, the totality of the people have only uh, the primary school in Bagari, Bazia, Basilia, and Wow. So the level of education is low. And uh, uh, however, the primary school is very important. Here I've represented the educational system in South Sudan. The primary school gives access to an important educational level, which is the vocational and technical educational level. That is a very important in a country where population was on run for two generations. And uh, it's very important to learn how to work, uh, how to grow, eh? how to um, develop the agricultural sector, especially, which is uh, the backbone of the economy of the country. And if we turn to the previous uh, uh, figure, we found the vocational education only in WOW, but only limited share of the population is attending to this, uh, uh, to this level of uh, education. So uh, education is very important for uh, the labor market. Uh, and. Uh, the majority of the population in Bagari, Batsi, and Basilia are uh, farmers. The situation is pretty different in the city, where we have the development of other activities. Uh, and the majority of uh, the uh, population is uh, the, in the working age is employed uh, in the skilled labor or a salary work, uh, or in the trading handcraft uh, sector, only 60% is employed in agriculture. However, agricultural is very important uh, and uh, we zoom in, into this sector. Let me show you, first of all, uh, an important data on the share of households with access to land. It is most, almost the half of the household in our sample. 
But uh, the agricultural practice uh, is uh, a subsistence agriculture, mm? especially the area available to the household is very small, and for 30% of the household is even lower than one fedana, which is 0.42 hectares. And can you see it is, uh, this number are the share of households by uh, uh, land size. And as you can see, 40-40% uh, of them has less than one fedana of uh, uh, land. Mm -hmm. The productivity is very low, uh, but one of the critical aspects we noted is that these uh, households practicing a subsistence farming depend on market for uh, purchasing seeds. Uh, and probably Sister Lourdes can uh, 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 make some observations uh, on uh, uh, the meaning of this uh, dependence, especially because uh, seeds uh, are many times uh, not appropriate for uh, 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 the climatic conditions and uh, they are genetically modified, uh, so uh, they can't be used uh, uh, next uh, agricultural year. But I let Sister Lourdes to intervene in this aspect. Another uh, element I want to provide you uh, regards uh, the extension services. The provision of these services is very limited. The extension services are assessed by maximum 8% of the households. And they are provided by uh, international organization or NGOs. So there is no limited local capacity to provide extension services. And this is another important gap. I would also like, uh, and this is the final uh, information I would like to provide you because this is important for further pro, uh, um, uh, for future project, uh, to provide you information on the main challenges uh, faced during farming. Uh, here you have uh, the share of household that indicate the different challenges is important. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, one of the major challenges was a shortage of rain and rain spell, because agriculture is conducted according to a rain-fed system, it strongly depends on rain. Mm -hmm. Then we have pest and diseases, shortage of seeds, of agricultural tools, expensive inputs, lack of marketing opportunities. Those are the major constraints that we also noted in other areas. Probably Sister Lourdes or the group in Tonja can provide us feedback on these constraints. So let me go to food and nutrition security. The situation is very deteriorated. Let us focus on this figure. Here I've classified the household or the share of households by food security level. The red bar uh, is uh, uh, represent the, the share of severe food insecure households. The light red, the household uh, moderately food insecure and the other are the food secure. Can you see, especially the severe food insecurity is accentuated in our areas, in the project area. And this justifies the intervention in this direction of our project, because the situation is very dramatic, is very dramatic. And this is the picture of food security in uh, uh, the period we investigated. But there is something behind, because uh, these households are not only food insecure, but they are also very vulnerable to father shocks. Eh? 
Eh? So they're not able to support other shocks, eh? uh, such as climatic shock or economic shock or conflict. And uh, we uh, used the evidence to test this, uh, um, this situation. Uh, I'm not presenting new data, but the message is that resilience is a reinforcement of resilience is a, a important area of intervention, especially in light of the fact that uh, uh, on the one side, uh, in the rural areas, uh, households uh, strongly depend on food assistance. Here you can see that uh, the basic food cereals, um, um, legumes, uh, and oil, fat, and vegetables uh, are uh, provided to the majority of the households uh, by food assistance. In Bagari, 63% of households re re receive cereals from this source. They are 65 in Basia and 78 in Bicelia. Without food assistance, these households can't uh, eat uh, uh, cereals and grains. On the other side, uh, in uh, Wow, households depend from market uh, for the basic food items. And uh, this is not a problem if you have adequate money, but if you are poor, economic access to food is compromised. Mm. And this is a, the other side of food uh, insecurity, the side of food insecurity into the city, into wow. We also investigated the nutritional status. This means uh, uh, the understanding of uh, uh, if the macro and macronutrients uh, are appropriate. And in this figure, uh, we have uh, the share of households uh, by frequency of consumption of protein, vitamin A, and iron. Just to give an example, in Bagari, 47% of the households are not consuming protein. 45% consume at least from one to six days of protein, and only 6% consume protein seven days. So this means that there is an inadequate consumption of protein, iron, and it seems that the situation is better for vitamin A. But uh, this uh, figure generates uh, a bit of suspicious, uh, and I further investigated this uh, uh, situation. And during the focus group discussion, uh, we noted that uh, this high consumption of uh, vitamin A was due to the consumption of wild food. Mm -hmm. This is an important coping mechanism in times of anger. For example, 56% of the household in Bagari consume wild food. 74% in Basia consume wild food. 77% of households consume wild food. Uh, this is an important coping mechanism. It is uh, the dominant food consumed by poor, vulnerable households, and it is the only source of food during the hunger season. It is a way of filling stomach full and uh, reducing the sense of hunger. So uh, the uh, results I show you, uh, it's of sure, uh, it seems to be very positive, but it must be another severe situation. My last chapter concerns water, sanitation, and hygiene. The situation is very deteriorated. Eh? I, for example, uh, the access to improved water is limited. 
uh, water collection is mainly uh, done by female adults. It is the 47, 46% of the population con collecting water in Bagari, uh, 49 in Basia, 52 in Bisselia, and 73 in Wau. The women are responsible for water collection. What is important to note is the time necessary to collect water. Here we have a huge difference between the rural areas and the city. Because for more approximately half of those collecting water in the rural area, it takes from one hour to less than half a day, while in city it takes less than 30 minutes. And maybe we can reflect on this uh, uh, difference uh, and the implication of uh, the time spent uh, uh, in collecting water. Uh, the availability of uh, latrine, even communal latrine, is uh, limited in the rural areas where almost 80% of the households has no access to latrine, they use basha. While sixty percent of the people of the households in Hawaii have access to uh, family latrine, and even the use of soap, uh, we found a gap, very big difference in uh, the in uh, the rural area and in Wow. Uh, almost seventy percent, or even more, of the households in Bagari Batsi and Basilia don't have soap. Uh, while in Wau, 50% of the households have soap. And this deteriorated situation produces a negative effect on household health. We noted that 90% 90 of the population in Bagari Batsia and almost 80% of the households in Bisselia and Wau have at least one person sick in their uh, family. And uh, uh, there are multiple uh, problems, health problems uh, affecting children and adults. And we even identify malaria, diarrhea, flu, fever, Typhoid, stomach pain is the most relevant uh, problems in children, while uh, malaria, flu, fever, typhoid, and stomach pain in adults. And when these people are sick, they go to the primary health care units or the primary health care center. Here you have the um, uh, organizational structure of uh, uh, the uh, 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 health system in South Sudan. And these units are very important. Their presence on, uh, on field are very, very important because they provide in treatment to this illness. And uh, Having uh, um, units uh, like uh, the one we have in WOW, Sister Dolores, uh, this is your uh, dispensary, well equipped uh, for blood tests uh, and uh, uh, for uh, uh, treatment of patients, uh, has a great value in this uh, situation. In our investigation, we also try to understand the channels through which WASH reach household food security. And we noted that improving WASH, we also reinforce household resilience and we reduce poverty. But an important uh, aspect uh, that's uh, a key element uh, to improve uh, food insecurity is represented by security. 
The situation now is improving in South Sudan. If you see this red line, is telling us that the violent events are reducing. And even these blue bars are showing us that violent fatalities are reducing. But we still have a high share of displaced population. And this is a signal of uh, a persistence of insecurity. Therefore, if we want to promote development, we need to promote a peaceful and inclusive society. And this means to focus on the 16th um, goals set by the United Nations. Our project focuses on very important targets, poverty, zero hunger, good health, and uh, um, decent work, uh, uh, but we also need uh, sound institutions uh, if, um, and, uh, uh, and peace, uh, and peace. And uh, I would like to close my presentation with uh, this slide where you can find the website in which we collected uh, all uh, uh, the results of our research activity. And here you have a very beautiful picture of uh, the warm welcome I received at my first arrival in WOW. Okay, we are trying to divide the presentation. We'll be just uh, each uh, one of the member present here will uh, start to share one aspect of our experience with the agriculture in the in Umbo. So yes, I pass the voice uh, one by one. We'll uh, start to explain the different uh, aspects. Then if you have any question, you just uh, tell us if you can hear well or not, so that we you know we stop <clears throat> and we try to improve. Okay. We can hear you perfectly. Okay. So I think uh, the first uh, one will be Jennifer. To your voice is very low. <laughs> Sister Lourdes, your voice is very low. Let me put the computer near us. I, I put off the video. I put the video, she put the video. I put the video off and I put the computer near to us. Okay. Now, now it's better? Yes, now it's better. Okay. Now I will pass the, the microphone to Jennifer that will es explain to us the, the beginning of uh, the agriculture here in, uh, in Gumbo. Let to see. Ah, speak. <laughs> Let me tell my name once again. Um, I feel Jennifer, and uh, I was here from the very beginning. We were the one who started the, the agriculture in Gumbo here during the time of Sister Bibiana. Yes, yes. And then we experienced the agriculture is the best in this Gumbo to help the women because the women, they have no work to do, as I'm um, speaking. We have never went to school during the time of war. We were born in war. We have never went to school. And then these uh, Celestian Nia sisters, they are the one who make us to, to come up. They give us a, how to learn agriculture. And on top of that also, they in the evening, they teach us how to write A, B, C, D. And we experience that the agriculture is the best to help the women and we have improved. And then, then okay. 
Then from there, the project has come. When the project is start, and then the women are, is coming, coming. We were many, and we have improved our life because of agriculture. It's a good for the security, food security. It started in 2020. Agriculture. With the Libyan. Um, I started in 2012. 2000, 2012. I started here. 2012, 2013, 2014. Up to now, I am here with sisters until all those things which was done, I was around and I experienced. The first time we were in bad situation, we were poor, we don't know how to dig. We can dig locally, but not like the way they train us. As now the project is starting 2018, 17. Then they train us 18, 19, they train us until 2020. Then we form the cooperative. As I'm speaking now, we form the cooperative and we can able to work by ourselves in the cooperative, but it's still the fact of agriculture is the most important to, to make women to grow. Thank you. Now I pass the microphone to Justin, who will present uh, some aspect of the project. Turn the, the camera. Yes, thank you. From 2017, the project started by registra registering, we are registering many women. About 150 women were registered in that year. Then we formed groups three groups of one, two, three different groups of women, a group of 50 each. Then we organize the women, train them in class, then giving them also lessons in the field. Then we started giving them, giving each farmer a kind of a 12 by 10 area to, to practice the work she learned in class. And then we continue the lessons, also continuing the demonstration in the field, little by little, then the women are getting the knowledge. We're giving them from subsistence farming to modern agriculture. So now the women are far better than when they started in 2017. So along this training, we are having different areas where women, they cannot cover because of their poor learning. Most of them are illiterate women but at least they can now be able to dig by themselves and learn some small areas of agriculture. Even if they cannot read, but they can even practice in the field. So the production keep on increasing from 2017 up to now. From when we started, the production was very low. Little by little now, the production has gone higher and higher. Especially when I talk of groundnut, the first year we have small number of cages of groundnut, but now this year, especially when the project, the project was ending, we have reached even up to 60 bucks of groundnuts. Leave alone the other crops, eggplant, tomato, watermelon, and many, many other crops. We, learned, we, we, we taught the women how to plant in line because they used to broadcast the seeds, resulting in poor growth of the crop, poor yield. So now at least they have learned how to plant every crop in line and the production has gone up. I can end here and then give the chance to my colleagues. This is Joyce who's talking to you. I'm here to present the, the part of challenges that we are having during the project until now. The most of the challenges that we are having, it was um, a scarcity of seeds, because in South Sudan, 
we are lacking seeds. And most of the seeds is coming from angels. Angels are the one uh, distributing seeds to farmers, and then they'll be able to produce. But if they do not, pro they do not pro uh, distribute, we cannot be able to get the source of uh, the seeds. And also, some other seeds we are getting from the market, but uh, it is not viable. Others you may plant, it, and in, it will not germinate. You see, these are the challenges. And also it may not come in time. It takes time when the rain season is almost ending. And the other challenge is also it was um, the soil. The soil has been exhausted that we have been planting since, since 2017 until 2020. The, city, the soil has been exhausted despite all the challenges, but we are able to produce the crops to the market. Thank you. Technical problem. Oh, what's happening here? So sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Oh, we have a problem here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, Evelyn. Yes. Um, Evelyn, once more, I'm going to talk about the issue of water. Uh, as agriculture is, it requires water, and I'm going to talk about the element of water. Uh, like we did three water point, one in Adodi, Sirikat, Jebel Lebun, and Gumbo. And during, during dry season, there is shortage of water. We don't have enough water for them, for watering or irrigating the crop and the vegetation in town. Then Jane or John, no Jane, John. <laughs> John. Okay, this is me, Joanne. I think I'm going to explain more about the lack of uh, seeds in agriculture. We are facing a lot of uh, big challenges with seeds. Like the women, they have the energy to cultivate, but we have <laughs> and not enough seeds. As a as a as a what as an agriculture, and many sometimes when we go to the market, we buy seeds. They are not germinating in our soil. It's not germinating very well. Like for example, we had planted uh, sukuma for several times in a greenhouse, but never germinated up to now. So that one is a very big challenge in agriculture. And then water also. Is a big challenge during rice season. The women have that energy really to plan for themselves to improve their life standard, but because of water during rice season, they cannot cultivate more. So I think I can talk about those two challenges. The one they had mentioned, I'm also trying to explain more a little bit. So in that way, the agriculture department is really facing a big challenge in water and seed. Water during dry season and seed. Some of the seeds are not good for the soil. Thank you. And then, Catherine? Yes, good morning. I'm Karama Catherine. Uh, I'm here to present something about the activities which is taking place in the, in the cooperative about the agriculture, the women, what we are doing. We are waiting for what the project for next year or what you are planning. Also, we have some girls also. For example, we have uh, Laura girls. We, they're also training about agriculture. <laughs> we have uh, also uh, programs about uh, the new pro programs, uh, 10 villages, for example, 
We have, uh, let me say some example about uh, some villages like Jebelemun, like uh, Adodi. There are many, so many. Uh, they are waiting for what we are going to do. And also they are ready, they can do everything. And also like uh, the activities which is taking place in the cooperative, we, are, we women, we are planning like uh, vegetables. There are many things. For example, we have groundnuts, Sukuma, uh, we are also cowpeas uh, leaves, many green gram, uh, maize, what we are doing. Also, like uh, we have a new project like uh, this uh, oil processing. For example, I'm um, one of them I'm also doing that. We are processing the oil, and I can see women are doing well because there's really improved. Movement. I can see they can process their oil, their, their own uh, oil. They can take to the market, and they grow groundnut. I can see this year there are lot of groundnut. They can even do that. They also process the peanut butter first. They have uh, also machine. You can see humans. They are very active. They are really improving. And we need more help from you people so that we stand firm for what's going on. You can see women are smiling, uh, smiling. For example, I'm even now smiling because what is taking place? Yes. Uh, these are all what I can say, what is taking place here. Even the girls, small girls, you can see. Uh, 200 girls, eh? they can um, dig, they can plan, they can say their own thing. You imagine the improvement is really taking place. And we say, Justin, you are really a good teacher. There's something taking place. And we, we need more. Yes. <laughs> it's very... Okay. This yes. is our... Our presentation. If you have any question, all of them, all of us, we are ready to, to answer and to share more. Wow, their energy is very incredible. Okay, this is 2008 19. We started the program for the children, especially this is for the women and as well as the families to uh, are involved to do the um, agricultural program. The main problem was children were not able to uh, pay the school fees. So we found that maybe through agriculture, land is very fertile, will involve the parents to participate in it. And so, this uh, program was started in 2019 when we received some funds. We called for the parents together with the students and their families. 80 families were given this program. And then so it continued. It was a big push for the students to go ahead. And um, he gave the condition that they will have to also to keep aside one sack of uh, groundnuts for their seed coming here and then to pay the school fees from there because mostly when they cultivate one sack of groundnuts, they can get five, if the, the ground is good, five, six, seven sacks they can get. So one sack they will return back so that this continuous chain will carry out to the other families. So this was the program when we presented to the parents, they were very happy and uh, they encouraged and they were uh, quite uh, collaborative, the parents were. Then went on to, uh, it was quite successful, except two or three groups did not, were not able to present. Then later, uh, COVID started in, <laughs> problem of the COVID in 2020, then we began 
also with the women in the um, agriculture sector so sister uh, miriam with the group and uh, also in the school continued then also we got some other benefactors had contributed some money um, from hong kong and that with that we bought about 160 sacks of groundnuts and given to 160 families plus the 80 of the school children secondary and uh, primary were given now mr den will speak about it because we had some meetings with the group uh, with this uh, sultan that is the chief of that group and they used to come every month and we have a meeting with them how to follow the group and each one had each uh, sultan had about 10 10 families good morning in year 2020 april i worked with the silicon society in our city first of all at uh, the beginning of the project we made community mobilization we talked up to the chief in order to identify the vulnerable people that are supposed to be helped so we target a uh, 16 chief i need to see the chief exactly and one chief uh, to bring the 10 uh, beneficiaries so that make the total of uh, 160 beneficiaries so we support them give them seven of crown telling them that when you for reduce you should you have to bring one back and then continue with it because you, you secure uh, the seed now in in tone here when you plan one back one one sack of ground it can bring you five so you bring one and then remain with the four sometimes if the soil is more fertile you may get six or seven sometimes so you bring one back and then later on the beneficiaries that ben- benefit from the project last year in 2020 we told the chief we don't need those beneficiaries again we need another vulnerable group to be supported so the chief gave us again uh, the new vulnerable group we support them this year 2021 again we have a project uh, of isap uh, i want to appreciate the isap i think in south sudan here the second in school the students are not being supported by, by ngos to have put in the school so it is really a challenge to them but i thank isa for supporting our students in order to have their own farm next year they can benefit from what they produce only we have some challenge and this challenge beyond our capacity to control we have a dry spell this year the rain rain lately but sometimes we try in order to plan a uh, short term variety uh, dura uh, hopefully uh, we shall get uh, the produce but not good for it because we have been uh, affected by by the drought that, that is a challenge we have now it is the season where by the potential farmers are ready uh, to make harvest we are expected Uh, to return uh, the the one bag that they have taken by each beneficiary and later on next year we can also target another uh, new beneficiary new beneficiary we want to balance the community because if you benefit this year you cannot also benefit next year no we want to equalize people yeah to have their own seat yeah so that is uh, that is our plan also i had a suggestion uh, if you may help us uh, we need you to continue with this support uh, to the people of toy and also yeah to the people of toy so that they should have to send by their own thank you this the garden which is seen there is the where sister miriam was working many years together with the women every year she had in the 
uh, earlier year she had 50 sometimes 60 sometimes 80 like this and she herself will be present there with the women and then she is to animate them uh, encourage them to cultivate and earn their own food and we had also very many times meetings with the women and the women were able to give an account of how many sacks they have produced and how many sacks they sold and paid the school fees of the children and how many families were able to stand on their own feet. So this had also helped. And when the seasonal cultivation is over, rainy season is over, we also made a facility for the water um, solar system that also with the help of some benefactors, solar one solar system is there. So they have the water and they come early morning, they come and put water the plant, which one is given a particular plot of land and they water it and that group is continued with the, up to Sister Miriam 2019, 20 because she was transferred and as a result 2000, 2000 okay 2019 also we got involved in ICSA that is in the um, in the congregational Self, uh, it's a sustainable uh, agricultural project. So that was uh, started by different groups. That is uh, by the what is the Franciscan uh, missionaries, and it was started from Uganda, and then also involved Kenya and South Sudan. So they are following up. This year we have taken up the vegetable garden so that is done by the okay sister Zabit huh? now it's sharing yeah okay can we start? Sorry, we cannot hear so. In South Sudan, we have food insecurity. 
uh, one of the things in other community, they just, they are pastoralists. They rely, they rely upon pastoralists. They just look after the animals. The climate is also a factor. If the rain is not reliable, so the farmers may not have a good produce. Uh, the civil war that is scared the farmers not to produce well because of fear of unknown attacks. In a place where there is uh, a security or full security, there is peace. Uh, there is peace and there is harmony and there is unity. Uh, another factor is the technology. They do not keep up with the new technology system. Uh, I should have to appreciate uh, the benefactors uh, that help uh, the Bakita High School uh, about uh, the project of agriculture, uh, that they can help to produce their own food, you know very well. Uh, sometimes it's NGOs, they do not support secondary school to help me. <laughs> For me, what I have picked in that uh, training, so it is how to use the the tools and also how to be independent. I got uh, the, the tools that we are how to use in the modern way of cultivation, like uh, tractors uh, and also the one of upflow. When you have a big land, like the one that you not manage by using your, your own malaria, you cannot manage. So I need to use those tools. Then you can manage that big land. <laughs> yeah, in first land, many people really they don't prepare land. This few numbers that I've just done this course, we learn how to prepare land. There are many ways that they are used to prepare land, then later how to plant the seeds, how to harvest, how to, to how to restore the crops. There are some pests and diseases that are eating the the, the seeds. But in this course now, it will prevent, it will prevent our seeds not to be eaten from any type of this. In the course, we learn three main things. First was uh, how to cultivate. Like we have a spacement between the plants so that the plant can share the nutrients and also so that the plant will grow big and uh, they can produce much. Secondly, how to control pests and disease, like to spray and also to weed the plants earlier. And thirdly, of the storage. The storage should be near to the production place so that they can be removed and stored at that place. We are using the skills to cultivate with our parents and also so that we can produce much to help us with what to eat and also Sometimes you can get income if the production is enough. By cultivation, you will get a lot of crops. If you want to sell those for yourself, you can. If you want to preserve for your, for, for your family, you can. Mainly we are doing this production so that we can have plants at the school. As you know, many people, many parents, they don't have enough food at home. This cultivation We'll be doing it, then we'll have plants at the school, and that one will help us a lot. The rain this year is not reliable uh, due to the climate change. That is the problem that facing has. Maybe this year we shall not be having a good produce. Help that it got us to not only think of it this time but also to have vision. It gave me an inspiration that I look into and that in future I will be able to see agriculture not only as a time to wait for the rain and be in cultivating but also irrigation as also a method of providing food for my country. Okay. Like now we are stuck because the rain came late, then it will not be a problem after years to come because we'll be able to take up irrigation as something that we can do, irrigate our plants and get our food we need whenever we need it, not depending on the rain. And thank you so much for the chance that I got and to be able to have this inspiration. We hope by the help of our benefactors, we stand by our own. Thank you very much. Thank
We have some of our participants here who are able to speak. Thank you, Sister Elizabeth. Yes. Now you can continue. Thank you. Can some of our participants here, can they speak? Yes, Ready? yes. Yeah, Chapol from uh, Bakita High School. Just uh, sister introduced about uh, how we try to help the learners in the high school. Remember when we started the school in 2018, we later realized uh, some of the students are from very vulnerable homes, trouble with school fees and other personal needs. In 2019, we started a project of giving them seats for cultivation on condition that they cultivate properly and return back the same amount so that it's given to the next group. In 2019, we started with the most vulnerable who were struggling with school fees the previous year. They were very faithful. That means it was in the second year, the senior twos. Uh, faithful and they did their cultivation and the next year they are able to return the sacks and last year during time of COVID still the ones who are around us some have gone to their villages but the ones who are around us so we were able to, to continue with the same project we gave them the seeds and so they were faithful they were able to return it's a project we have seen great importance the students are happy because they have been able to stand on their own and pay school fees and also provide for their other personal needs because they come from very poor homes. They are able to buy their stationery and other personal effects. So we continue with the project even after the senior post complete because the school is continuing and they just hope for the best. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, when we started with the primary, the things are moving on well and they are able to change their life, those who are what they are borrowed from school. So we really appreciated the project and they, we continue to move ahead with it and we're not going to stop because it is benefiting almost all of them, and we are managing well. Thank you. Can you come to near, near to the microphone? Near to the microphone? Yes, Somewhere. Uh, I said that uh, we started well with the primary 2019, and therefore it is benefiting almost all of them. And uh, since we started, there's no problem. We are able to change their life, not only here in the school and also back home. And we hope the project uh, continues uh, so that uh, each learner benefits from it. Thank you. My name is Rose. I want to speak the side of the ladies. This program still is very good. Me, I'm very happy with this program. Ladies are the ones suffering here in Sudan. If you're helping the ladies to cultivate, this one is can help us. You, you get your own food and then you take your child to school and then if you sick you say you go to hospital me i appreciate the sisters i thank the sisters because of this program they start 2019 they give us if you don't have something to to start you cannot start they give us molotovs and then they give us groundnuts 
and then we can keep it. We get we get a lot of groundnuts. Me, I want to say that sisters and all people they are helping on Twitch. We want to continue with this program to grow up. Now here in San Bakita, our our children they learn how to work. They know how to cultivate. They know to do everything here with the sisters. Sisters, they used to teach our children. Every child, they know how to do everything. But this program, really, I want to this program to be a big program here in Tonch because they. Uh, Here, the months I don't have work. The ladies are the one who work. If they teach those ladies this work, they can grow up. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Elizabeth Fetch. Yeah. I'm Elizabeth Fetch. We are two students. This program of agriculture has really helped us a lot, especially the girls in Tunji. Like, for example, people have like difficulties at home, but through agriculture, they are able to farm and get some produce that has helped them to pay their school fees and also their personal needs. Not only girls alone, even to help some parents, like, like some other parents pull their levels totally down. They are able to farm and then they have gotten some food to eat at homes. This agriculture project has really supported the people of Donj. Thank you. Uh, he is uh, Silverio from mm -hmm. Bongo tribe. Bongo tribe. He is the chief of that uh, tribe. Mm. He was uh, telling to the wife, I am really. Uh, so the, he was telling to the wife that sisters have helped, they have helped a lot. So now we are able to go ahead. Mm. The help which I received with the groundnut. Now we don't have any problem that is helping us to go ahead. Now the problem of the food and the reduced, uh, we are able to go. They are asking you to continue the help that will help us to go ahead. Give support to the sisters, and sisters will give us, give it to us. The same. That is my last word. Thank you, thank you to you all. Do you want to speak? So, all sisters, Lavita, something, or Lavita, uh, I'm Sister Lavita. Uh, just taken up this extra project. Uh, it's a program for uh, to enhance the uh, the the poor condition of these of the of the families or of the household. Uh, of what I see is uh, the women are quite committed because they know through this program, they are able to look after their families, they are able to get some income, they are able to get some daily food. But uh, the, I think so this year with the, the, the climatic conditions are, are not favorable. 
So they are a little bit doubtful about what is going to happen in the coming months. But uh, thanks for Iksha and thanks for you all for giving us uh, this opportunity to help those in need. No? Uh, only one thing is sometimes I feel there is a there is this understanding of uh, that need to the, every time like no they are we have to the, the, like every time they keep on asking. Uh, but uh, they feel that it is a right to receive. Mm -hmm. So mostly they are at the receiving end still. So I'm trying to find out as to how to work together to take care of the larger need. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to add one more point with regards to it. There was a big problem <clears throat> when there, whenever there is a conflict between the clan. The, there is no security of their food or safety. So they were asking for the storehouse. So warehouse was with the help of the, some benefactors. Warehouse is being constructed, not yet finished. So that will become a support for these people. Sometimes the other group, they come and they set fire to their house, to their food stuff or their rob. Many things takes place. So very often people are on the move because of the uh, insecurity. So they prefer to leave everything and run away for, to safeguard their life. They run. So meanwhile, others will uh, loot the things and all of these kind of problems had come. So there was a voice from the uh, chiefs, that is sultans. They were asking to help us to support us with the warehouse. So that, that will help us at least not to be very many things, at least for the seed and some amount can be uh, stored there. And that will become a big help for them to do. And we thought of doing it in our garden. We didn't find much security that area. So within our campus itself, is that store is built, being built, not yet completed. Maybe within one or two months time, it will be ready. And so whatever their people are cultivating now, bring a harvesting. They will be able to store at least their seeds and then what they have to return, they will return. That will be for the other group. And so in this way, we give a support is given to this particular group and this, uh, all this around the area. Thank you. Anything more? Okay. Sister Dolores. Oh, yes, yes, we are all here. And uh, because of internet connection, we were not able to present ourselves earlier. But now maybe we can show ourselves to you so you can see all of us who have participated in the meeting. We just say our names. Come forward. Come here, come here, stand. I'm Sister Viviana, the director of Health Center, Sikadi PHCC. We are really very grateful this project, Food Security, where many beneficiaries benefited a lot. Thank you very much. And we hope uh, some other project continue to support us. Yes, I'm teacher Zakaria Soka. Wani uh, from St. Joseph uh, Basic School. I'm happy to uh, attend this meeting today, but I uh, hope that uh, must to continue with that project. Thank you. Yes, good morning. I'm Teacher Pasquina from St. Joseph Primary School. Very happy to attend this meeting and may God bless you so that you continue with your project. Thank you. My name is Emmanuel Anthony Hukela, a teacher from St. Joseph Primary School. I would like to take this chance to thank you for the good presentation. Uh, we have learned many things and uh, I hope uh, you continue to support uh, South Sudan. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Kenyi. Uh, I'm a student 
I'm a student in St. Joseph. I finished a uh, senior four, but now I'm studying in PTC at uh, Don Pasco. Uh, I greet uh, Maria. Uh, so I'm happy for this meeting today. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm happy. I'm Viola John Abuget. I work in Sikahadit Hospital to Sister Viviana. I hope this uh, day for the, that uh, program, I say thank you. Welcome to South Sudan. Uh, good morning, I'm Matteo Perotti. I'm in the uh, teacher in the Catholic University. I follow the project since the beginning as a supporter. Uh, and I'm happy also to see plenty of friends here and there in Gumbo and uh, Tonj. Thank you very much. Yes. Good morning. Uh, Good we morning. are we are volunteers from Poland. In Auxilium School and St. Joseph School. Thank you for this time. I hope you will continue this project. My name is Viviana. Sometimes I go also to school. And my name is Alexandra and currently I work in Mexico. Thank you. I am Sister Auxilia. I am the member of the present community. I was happy to know more about all the good work you are doing. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, uh, ciao, Maria. <laughs> so once again, once again, thanks a lot for the beautiful presentation and the entire event today was a big eye opener also for us. We are a city people and uh, agriculture as such. Yes, we have a very good garden that uh, produces our own vegetables. Maria, you know it. And uh, uh, we try to promote agriculture. Unfortunately, this year, the, the education system has taken away agriculture from its system. And uh, if we don't teach agriculture in primary school anymore now, but we promote agriculture by helping students to realize that it's very important to work with their own hands and to work with the land, with the land that God has given them. Thank you, Maria, especially for your visits to South Sudan in the support of this project for food security. Uh, I'm sure everyone uh, will appreciate the fact that you made the journeys to be here to visit some of these places, especially the civilian camps that you have visited personally, and for all the work that you have done to bring this project to a successful completion. Thank you to everybody who has been part of this, and we hope that we can continue to support the people of South Sudan in the future in whatever way possible. God bless everyone on this team. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> From here, Addis Ababa, Simon has something to. <laughs> To share, okay, Simone. Hello, good morning or good afternoon to everybody. This is Simone Cerf. I am the responsible for the Italian development cooperation for the program in South Sudan, not specifically for this project, because this project has been uh, uh, supervised by our headquarters in Rome, but for, for other emergency projects in South Sudan. So, uh, well, thank you very much for all the information that I received from your side today. It has been very interesting. And although I do not have a direct uh, understanding of the project because it was not under my responsibility, I could understand from, uh, from this meeting that um, as a matter of cut, the, uh, the, uh, the fact that we can meet uh, and discuss the challenges and the achievement of the project at the end of it, 
it means that the, 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 process, the project has been very successful. And from your, your feedback are really, really relevant for it. In first place, uh, the fact that uh, the, this project could tackle both the health, nutrition, and on the other side, the food security, it gives uh, a comprehensive uh, uh, approach to the problems that uh, South Sudan is facing. And, uh, and that's very relevant. That's very, absolutely, is the successful approach that uh, we, we are looking into in order to, to, to solve the problem on the long term, on one hand. On the other hand, I really appreciate the commitment and to see a lot of people, uh, a lot of uh, South Sudanese uh, friends and colleagues uh, in, this, uh, in this meeting, because that's, uh, that's, that's really important. The participation, the involvement of the people in the project is what makes the difference between succeeding and uh, or uh, uh, between failing in the project. And uh, all these people that I've seen, all of you that I've seen here today, um, I mean, it, it must be uh, very difficult for you to implement the project in a, such a successful way. But uh, congratulations to all of you for your work. Uh, I hope we will continue to support uh, your work uh, in the future because it's really important. And uh, as last thing that I want to say, uh, we didn't mention in this, uh, in this project that uh, the approach that you are using is in line with uh, what is the the mainstreaming uh, worldwide of the humanitarian work, uh, which is the triple nexus, the connection between emergency response, between development and creation of peace, which are nowadays recognized worldwide as the best approach in order to solve the problems. Thank you so for, uh, for allowing me to participate uh, to this meeting. And uh, hello to everybody. Yeah. <laughs>